Rwanda is known as the land of a thousand hills, and these riders have been up and down most of them. Inside a decade, this is a country where race cycling has taken hold, with Team Rwanda competing throughout Africa and beyond. It's a miracle of the way it happened, and I think it's been an incredibly uh, rare opportunity to see a culture actually germinate and grow in a country. The first American to compete at the Tour de France, Jock Boyer, came to Rwanda 10 years ago to organize a local race. After experiencing the excitement that caused, he decided to stay on and put a national team together. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of bicycles here in Rwanda already. Uh, they use them mostly for taxi bikes and transport, and you don't see that in any other country. So when I go and test a rider on the Velotron and test their ability and their efficiency, already they have the muscles for riding a bike. The riders live five days a week at Team Rwanda's training camp, a life-changing opportunity, but an expensive one to sustain. When Team Rwanda first started in 2007, there were just five unpaid riders. There are now 18 on full-time contracts, earning up to $50,000 a year. And while there is some government assistance and sponsorship, team bosses still need to find around half a million dollars a year to keep these riders on their bikes. The lift in profile an Olympic appearance provides is one way of raising support. Nathan Biyukisengi has qualified for the mountain bike race in Rio later this year. He follows the trailblaze by former teammate Edwin Neon Shuti. Four years ago in London, he became the first black African to compete in the event at any Olympics. In cycling, he improved my country because, uh, you know, we win a tour of Rwanda, we racing many countries. People around the world, they know about Rwanda for cycling. If he needs help, we can help. English grammar, as well as engaging gears, is part of the day for all riders, including 20-year-old Jean d'Arc, the first woman to sign with the team. I want to be a full-time professional and hopefully inspire other girls. They shouldn't be discouraged by our culture, which in the past made it a taboo for girls to cycle. Pace setters on and off the road, Team Rwanda is quickly changing the country's sporting culture and the lives of its riders. Andy Richardson, Al Jazeera, Musanze, Rwanda.